Okay, so we're gonna start. Uh, so our talk will be about uh, schema migrations. Uh, my name is Ren. I work in uh, BookMD. BookMD is uh, yeah, all right. BookMD is an American Israeli startup. We develop a marketplace for healthcare services in the United States, and we work mainly with Meteor. I'm, and I'm David. Uh, I'm a freelance uh, full stack developer. I'm a member of the Gildas Programmers. It's the group that brought you this meetup. All right, so in a word, why do we need schemas in our world? So when your project grows, you're probably going to find, to find a schema for your data. If you don't do that, you're probably uh, going to lose control of your data. Uh, lots of stuff that you can do from a lot of places. Um, lots of potential bugs if you want to do it. And you probably want to do it in order to avoid mistakes. Also, the definition of your data is very clear. Uh, it helps when you have seven programmers on your team. It's really helpful to sync everybody together. It really helps to understand how your data structure is and how the flow even of your business logic of your app works. And of course, it's recommended by the meter guide to use it. So, use it. All right. So. Why do we need to migrate our data? So let's say we deployed our app and it started being used and data is starting to pile. We data starts piling. People start using our app and we have some data on production that we don't want to delete. We have some business transactions, we have some customer's data uh, and we don't want to delete it. But we still want to deploy our new version of our app which, which we can change completely the way we work with our data. So we must fit the current data to our new version of, the, of, the, of our app. All right, so we decided to create slash search for the ideal migration tool. And we uh, define certain uh, requirements for, for this tool that we search for or we create. So we wanted to track schema changes because we change a lot during our development and now we have data on production. We want to see if we can compare the, data, the schema which is used in our production environment uh, in our current developing uh, schema. Uh, we also don't want to miss anything because it changes a lot. So we want something to do it automatically. We also wanted to keep our schema definitions clean. What I mean by that is we don't want to, if we remove the field for example, or we change, we don't want to add any properties to that field. Uh, so we will know that it was removed or changed because it will be a mess and, it, and the future development uh, can be even more uh, uh, worse. We also uh, wanted to create as much as auto migration as we can if it's possible for a lot of trivial stuff that we added. For example, if we added a field that has a default value that we can add automatically to all our documents in our production environment, we can do it automatically. We want to. But of course, sometimes it's not enough and we wanted to add, uh, to allow the programmer to add its logic. Sometimes we are, uh, we must write our own code in order to do that. Also, we want to run it as a CLI because we want to control when we run the product, when we run the migration, on which environment, maybe to uh, use it from a, a script, uh, from a DevOps script. Uh, so we want to control uh, when we're going to run the migration and to separate it from even creating the migration and, um, and programming it. 
And of course, we are in a Meteor uh, meetup, so we want to make it work uh, with uh, Meteor. So we searched and we saw two packages, one by Percolate, which I believe you know, and one, one by my fellow mate David here. Uh, but uh, those, those packages, you can, you can search and look for it. Maybe it can fit your, your, uh, your project and your requirement. But for us, it wasn't enough. And the main problem that we faced is first, the migrations by Percolate weren't binding to any schema definition. So we had to write everything manually. And we can forget stuff. And we can be more clever. Uh, they didn't have any uh, powerful CLI tools. The Percolate migration has a deprecated CLI tool. And in David's package, it doesn't build that way, so you can run it in a CLI. So basically, we couldn't control when are we going to run the migration, uh, which, was a pro which is a problem. And those two uh, packages, the code that migrate the data runs from inside of Meteor, uh, which when we deploy our app, the code's still there. And it's unnecessary, because once we migrated our data for a new version, we don't need this code anymore. And usually, what all those packages do, they run it inside a meter.startup block, which will run every time you run your Meteor app. So again, we do not have any control when we're going to run the migration. So we decided to create our own, and to make uh, the best of everything. Um, so we created our own package. We use it in BookMD uh, right now. And uh, you can search also. You can look it up. And David will continue from here explaining about it. Yeah, so uh, Ken here explained the, the goals that we wanted to solve. So the first goal was uh, to track the schema changes. Uh, so the way we did that is uh, we are saving the, the current uh, schema uh, whenever you run create migrations into a folder under your, uh, well, a folder that you state. Um, it, ha it can be under your Git repository and you can also uh, commit that to your uh, source control. Um, and also, uh, you can see here that you can, uh, when you can control uh, whenever you run uh, the create schema. So that way you are not forced to uh, create version each time you change your schema, only when you want uh, to create a new version. Um, yeah, so the next goal uh, was the schema, defi schema definition clean. Um, and by saving the, the schema history, uh, we are really, um, it's not necessary for us to, to allow these kinds of properties like rename and added uh, to, to know what's, what's different uh, in your new version of schema. Um, so this way, in your own code, you will have your, only your current schema and not the history uh, that you use. Um, so also the, the next goal would be to create auto-migrations if it's possible. So what we've done is uh, we, here we, um, we run a, a, a diff function on your schema, on your current schema and your old schema. And then uh, if we see trivial migrations, we create uh, for you uh, update calls for uh, for updating your, your new collection. So in here you can see that in this update uh, we go through the whole collection and add the type of the field uh, with the default value once. Um, and this is generated from uh, from our code and it's saved into a, into a migration uh, file in the in the migration, migration directory that I've shown you before. Yeah. So, um, the next thing that we can do here 
is uh, whenever we face um, a change that we cannot migrate automatically, uh, we do um, uh, note the developer about this change, and uh, by using by doing this, we are uh, trying to minimize the amount of uh, of uh, changes that you will miss, uh, probably. Uh, you could also miss uh, migration, certain migrations, but uh, at least this way you will have more coverage um, and less work for you. Um, so the next thing is because we are writing all of those migrations into a script, um, you could go and, and review this script and add your own code so in here you can see that this portion of, uh, of code is uh, our own code and, and this code will copy a certain volume uh, from the documents uh, that you are updating from username to uh, owner. And this is the generated code that I've shown you before. Uh, the next goal would be to run a CLI. So uh, the first script that we, that we added to this package and it's gonna be copied into your project directory um, once you run this package. Uh, this script will allow you to uh, create the migrations. It takes uh, a name, and this name could be any string without spaces, uh, but you have to be consistent with it. Uh, it takes version, um, your current version, your old version, and the path for your migrations uh, directory, where you want to save those uh, new schemas and uh, migration script and the second script will be run migrations uh, this takes a configuration file and uh, in this configuration file you can state your different environments um, and also you can give this tool the environment you want to run this migration on um, you, you need to give it the operation that you want to do if you want to do an up or down and the target directory that you're gonna run the, the migration scripts from. And this is uh, the, the directory that we stated before. So this is an example of your configuration file. Of course, you can add whatever environment you, you want here. Um, one setup could be a setup where you have a staging app and a production app, and then you will migrate your staging app and switch those around. In this way you can give uh, the user a seamless uh, uh, experience while updating your app. One last thing. Uh, this package is, is uh, divided to two, two packages ex uh, actually. Uh, the first package is the Google Disk Schema Migrations. It's a migration engine. And the second package is the versioning tool uh, written by me. It's the Simple Schema mig Migrations package. Uh, sorry, simple schema versioning package. And by replacing the simple schema versioning tool, you could also uh, extend this package to allow different kinds of schemas like joy or astronomy or whatever comes next. Uh, so this is also extendable and will allow you to be future proof for that. That's it, any questions? Well, the question was if uh, we, uh, well, we do get a message uh, for uh, updating the, 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 op the fields from an object to stream. Uh, so you, you asked if we need to change the whole script again uh, while after getting this message. So no, this, uh, n this message is not on the CLI, it's on your script. It's just a comment in the script, and you can you can choose if you want to uh, to address it or not. It only depends on you. But we are uh, creating the script with those messages built in. Just to make uh, uh, something more clear, we create uh, a migration file which contains a, a function actually that you will run eventually, and in this function. You have a comment, you have comments. If you cannot auto-migrate trivial stuff, you get comment, hey, we did not, we could not uh, find auto-migration for this collection, 
because of this and that and this and that. So you will get notified more. The team also checks the form itself, like it's valid or something like that? Yeah, so we are, uh, we are using collection two uh, package for the, for the schema. Um, so the simple schema versioning tool, uh, it all actually relies on that collection two package. So you have to use collection two in order to uh, in order to use our R package, um, and collection two already validates your own uh, your own insertions, updates, uh, removes that you do um, to allow the the data to be consistent with your own code. So this is why we recommend this this package, or not not anything else. Any more questions? Thanks for listening.